Let's head to Death's Door. Thought I'd bring you back from here on out, because we've been traveling this a lot, but I haven't been up here around Death's Doorstep in a long time. I want to stop by the Horologian, see if it's maybe the Ephemera's time. I'd like to take part in the rituals rather than just watch. Ah, Enclave of the Dead. Enjoy their hospitality with your crew. That'll lower my tear. <laughs> By 5%. Of course, it'll be harder to get out of the Blue Kingdom, since I have Dining with the Dead, but that's not that big of a deal. As long as it's not too big. I'm not sure which of the Lagoy will want to attack me now that I'm Ephemera. Nope. Okay. Hmm. So suddenly there's two spear furs, an eater of the dead. A... yeah, I forgot what the thing is called, um... And three cantankeries. What is that thing called? Uh... Fuck, I forgot. Anyway, I'm out of here. This is way, 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 way too much. I'll release some mines, though. That seems like fun. Actually, you know what? They all are mostly fighting each other. Maybe I should release some more mines. all leaving me? Come back here. Come on, you gotta leave some bodies for me. Plunder. That spawned another spear for excellent. Ooh. All right, that'll definitely kill the spear for. I'm not sure if this Lagoy is interested in me. I don't think it is. A failure, which actually is a success, reduces my terror. Oh, Jesus.
Back up. We're good. Another terror reduction. Whoops, didn't mean to shoot again. I meant to blow up that previous one. I don't want to hurt the Lagoy because I don't want to aggro it. Come on, Lagoy. Shit. Shit. That's a bad position. No. That was that was real bad. That should do it. Yeah. Whew. Man, those mines hurt so much when they explode just like on my ass. That was a fun fight though. Complete clusterfuck. I can't strip its hole. I'm sure there's some other things to get back here. That red Lagoy just didn't care about anything. Didn't want to help or hinder. It's just like, I'm just an observer. Leave me out of this. I wonder how easily like bodies despawn. Would they be gone already? Yeah, I think I might be gone, or I just don't feel like going all the way back. Well, I should avoid combat, or at least be very careful about it now. Let's go to the Horologian first, and then the Shadow of the Sun. Because of the whole, like, uh... I forgot exactly what they were called, but those flowers with unfinished stories on them. I finished one and I was supposed to return. And then we'll go into the tunnels of Death's Doorstep. Horologian. Ah, yeah, it looks like because I'm ephemera, I can now partake of the feast. In fact, it seems like I have to. I can't leave, and it says, you are ephemera, you have no choice here. Spirits in porcelain masks wait to take you to a banquet of shades. Beneath the great dial is a cavern. At its center is a single banquet table, carved from the long jaw of an eater of the dead. Scores of ephemera sit on benches before a vast and ghostly feast. You are shown to your place. The food before you sits on platters of bone, pale as an autumn moon. It tastes like the memory of butterscotch and mellow vanilla. You partake in silence. The only sound is that of your spoon against your bowl again and again. Have more dining with the dead. Vision of the heavens, and my terror has fallen. All right, Shadow of the Sun. Let's go to the Garden of Unflowers. Tell her the conclusion you wrought. You finish one of the Unflower stories on her behalf. The Gardener Archivist listens with delight, hanging onto every word. 
I'm so glad you managed to finish one, she says when you are done, clapping her hands together. Oh, but there are so many more left to conclude. By way of reward, she hands you a bundle of yellowing maps. These maps show the secret pathways of starlight, she tells you in a hushed whisper. Unlicensed chart, savage secret. I'm guessing this is... This is probably something you can just do unlimitedly, right? I mean, there's so many of them. It seems to be just go to some place and finish the story. Actually, maybe not. Because when you write the story, you get a description of like what the story was about, right? And that, that feels like a unique thing, not just something that would always be the same. Yeah, let's uh, try to conclude another one. Same descriptions before. Yep. Question is, where does it want me to? Where do they want me to take it? It's for Lustrum. Okay. The other one was for. Um, the Empyrean, Eagles Empyrean. I'm not exactly sure what that place is really called. It's the Khan's place. It's the Eagles Empyrean. It's, I don't know. Eagles Empyrean, probably. Okay. I don't think there's any reason to seek an audience with the Arbiter, is there? Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Is this... Oh, this is a platform, not a full port. So they're not going to have deals or anything like that. That's a doorstep now. Make your way to the Endless Furrows. Acquire a shovel. Uh, this might be different. The yoked spirit clutches her shovels jealously. She lacks a voice jar, so instead she crouches and scrawls in the mud. These guide the dead to their door, she writes. They're reserved for those who need them most, the frailest spirits, the struggling. Um, my Blue Kingdom litigator will argue my case. In no time at all, the nameless spirit has persuaded the recalcitrant shade that you are the frailest and most meager of spirits. You are handed a shovel, and she even writes, Good luck in the mud. Your litigator informs you, however, that they will wait for you back at the engine. They have no desire to get any closer to death's door than they already are. Fair. Dig for your door. Occasional flashes of thunderless lightning illuminate the blighted land. Shades burrow in the mud like eager worms. You should join them. The mud is a miserable ocean, vast, uninterrupted. You hold your shovel like a dousing rod, and somehow know exactly where to go. Your blade bites earth, again, again, again. Your hands bleed, your arms ache. Eventually resemble some kind of splattered mud wraith. Finally, your shovel slams against something solid. The blade breaks. On your knees, you scrabble and uncover a stone door with your name inscribed upon it. Your very own door to death, ancient and brutal and familiar. It has been here, waiting for you, since the beginning of all things. You heave it open and drop into darkness. Isn't that just a terrifying thought? Like, imagine, out there right now there's a door, death's door, my very own personal hatch to death's door with my name on it, just waiting for me. Scour the scrawled messages on the walls. I think we've done this before. Yes. Well, huh. I get a savage secret, so I guess I might as well do it every time I come here. 
I want to help a lightless spirit, but I don't want to become lightless in case that prevents me from doing other stuff. Search for the industrialist's lost love. You call her name and interrogate passing spirits to no avail. She must be even deeper in the cattle folk. Or not cattle, uh, catafalk. Yeah, so going deeper is a thing that I didn't do because when I was here, my terror was extremely high. So, press deeper into the catafalk. The tunnels open up ahead and a ring of Lagoy circle the ceiling. You'll need to pass a test in order to progress. The test of substance. Here, the tunnel opens up into a great hall. The gangling sequestrator sits on her raised throne, surrounded by hanging lanterns and censers. Not, not censors, censers. Ah, a censer is a container in which incense is burnt during a religious ceremony. I think it's pronounced censor, basically the same as like censorship, but I'm going to pronounce it censer instead of censor, just to kind of differentiate it a little bit. Not that we're ever likely to see, <laughs> see that word again. As the spirits pass beneath her at a steady shuffle, she extends one telescopic arm <laughs> and settles a veiny hand across their porcelain mask. With a moment's wrenching effort, she yanks it away, leaving the spirit faceless. It turns and heads deeper into the catafalque. Faceless. Uh. Endure the removal of your face. You will lose your face and with it five hearts. <sighs> Perhaps you will be able to get it back at a later date. Mmm. Five hearts? And there's only a 55% chance of success. What happens if I don't succeed? They don't take my face or they just like, I die. They take my face wrong and I just die. <laughs> mm. Bargain for special treatment with a testament of roses. Hell yes. When you present your testament of roses to the sequestrator, she agrees to be a little more gentle in removing your face. You will lose your f Oh, so it's still gonna happen. Okay, shit. Alright. You will lose your face and with it five hearts. Perhaps you'll be able to get it back. That's the same. Uh-huh. I guess the only difference between this and this is that I'm guaranteed to succeed here. I don't have to do the iron roll if I do this. Alright. Uh. The sequestrator teases your face away delicately, like she's peeling a scab. Her hand retreats with something ragged clutched between its fingers. It doesn't hurt at all. A weight has been lifted. Your new reality becomes apparent only when you touch your face and feel nothing but an expanse of brute, blank flesh. Your vision dims, as though a gray veil has closed over the world. With some effort, you're able to manifest a lipless slit of a mouth which screams. <laughs> you have passed the test of substance and your face is gone. You may move further into the catafalque. Okay, great. Your face has been confiscated. Here the tunnel opens up into a great hall. The gangling sequestrator sits... Wait, this is the same description... Oh, I guess, yeah, I haven't actually moved further on yet. Okay. Press deeper. You've passed the test of substance and surrender your face to the sequestrator. Your face can be reclaimed from the quartermaster in the endless furrows. The horde of spirits, now without masks, proceed through the tunnels in a seething dark mass. There's a momentum to them now. They move like a flood. A dozen Lagoy blaze overhead their incandescent forms casting stark, brilliant shadows. As the shades pass beneath, they're lashed with tongues of bright flame. They flinch, straighten their backs, hurry on. No spirit is struck twice. Offer my services to the gangling sequestrator. Help a bereaved spirit find her lost companion. 
search for the industrialist's lost love. Oh, and also just pass beneath. Oh, pass the little while avoiding its tendrils of fire. 100% chance of success. Nice. Hmm. Well, first, industrialist. It'll be more difficult to find her now that the spirit's masks have been taken. You call her name and interrogate passing spirits to no avail. She must be at death's door already. Either that or she's passed on. Okay. Let's help the bereaved spirit find her lost companion. They stuck together through death, the court, even the mud, but they lost each other in the test of substance. With her mask removed, the bereaved spirit's face refuses to stick in your memory. When you look away from her, all you're left with is a vague impression of her heartfelt sadness. His face was taken, she scratches on the wall. I lost him in the crowd. Please, his name is Bobby. Seventy-two percent chance of success. Yeah, let's try it. He must be somewhere among the rushing faceless crowd. Yes. You stride up and down the tunnels of the catafalque, calling Bobby's name. Just as your voice is beginning to fail, you notice a commotion. The spirits are pausing, congregating for a moment, before resuming their endless procession. Pushing your way through, you find the spirit of a dog, back paws trapped in a hollow of collapsed wax. Bobby, you call. The dog stares at you piteously. Piece by vicious piece, you pull the wax from its legs, giving it enough room to bound free. The dog spirit circles you, tail wagging. You should reunite it with its owner. Oh, I just rescued a dog. Hmm. Reunite the bereaved spirit and her companion. Bobby is close by her side, tail wagging, his porcelain snout nudging at your knee. Without her mask, the bereaved spirit's face is slippery. Her features vanish from your mind as soon as you look away. Was she happy when she saw her lost companion? Did she laugh? Did she weep? You can't remember. He jumps into her arms. They don't speak or laugh. There are no happy barks. As ever, they're perfectly silent. She has nothing she can give you, but she writes her thanks on the wall. She joins the rush of spirits, Bobby prancing at her heels. Moment of inspiration. Nice. I mean, I would have done it for nothing. Help somebody find their lost dog? Of course. Hmm. Offer my service to the gangling sequestrator. If you succeed, this will put you on the path to changing your blue kingdom status to yoked. Do I want to do that? You unlocked this by having no bag of faces. Yeah, I don't think I want to change to yoked at the moment, and I don't think I want a bag of faces. Let's keep it that way. Pass the Lagoy while avoiding its tendrils of fire. Perhaps if you duck down amid the greatest throng of spirits, you can pass them by unnoticed. You slip quickly through the swollen crowd, head bowed. The spirits on either side of you are struck by bolts of fire. For a moment, the shades pause, then continue on their way with renewed purpose. But you escape the Lagoy's attentions. Press deeper. You will need to pass a final test. After that, death's door awaits. After asking your name, a yoked spirit allows you to pass. The test of definition. Once again, the tunnel opens up and becomes a staircase, descending into a cauldron huge as a lake. It brims with a whirling black fluid. Dozens of the yoked stand stirring at the edges. An endless procession of shades march in without hesitation and are whipped away by the current. On a balcony above the cauldron, a vast frog-like spirit carefully oversees the entire affair. What are you waiting for? It croaks when you pause. Oh my god, this really is just... Remember what we saw beyond Death's Door? 
we know all these people are just food? I mean, it's pretty obvious here even on this side of death's door. Everybody's being prepped as food. Everybody's food. Taking off your faces, you know, it's that's like, I don't know, peeling the carrots or potatoes or whatever. Chopping them up, putting them in a stew, prepping them. <laughs> Ask the amphibian alchemist what awaits you in the cauldron. Step in the cauldron and try to keep yourself intact. You will lose your name and with it five mirrors. Perhaps you'll be able to get it back at a later date. The nameless spirit could assist here. The nameless spirit? Didn't they say they were going back to where they go to the... The ship? Maybe it's not the nameless spirit that I have with me. I don't remember exactly which one it is. Hmm. I can slip away without attracting the Lagoy's notice. 100% chance of success. Ooh. Uh, but first, let's ask the amphibian alchemist what awaits you in the cauldron. Spirits pile up behind you. The alchemist groans in frustration. You will enter the cauldron and mix with the other spirits, croaks the alchemist. You will taste each other's memories, know each other's innermost selves. If you are strong enough, you will emerge on the other side, stripped of irrelevancies. Your name, for instance. And if you are not strong enough, you will remain in the cauldron and other spirits will absorb what they need from you. You will still reach death's door. They will take you with them, piece by piece. <laughs> Uh. Slip away without attracting the Lagoy's notice? Is, hold on, is slip away gonna make me go back out? Or is it getting past without sacrificing anything? Maybe I should just focus on a powerful thought. Use this moment of inspiration. I'm going to lose some stuff, but I perhaps will be able to get it back. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure this is going back. Let's step into the cauldron focusing on a powerful thought. A beacon blazes in your mind. Its light will fill you, keep you whole. As you step beneath the surface, foreign memories flood you, fleeing through long grass, the crunch of bones between your jaws, swirling, unfamiliar skies. You are coming apart. Spirits swirl around you, silent shapes with arms outstretched. You're buffeted by memories, sword fights in a forest, sunken libraries, a city of flame. You cling to your name, but there are a dozen other names you can call to mind, and you no longer know which is yours. You fight the swirling currents and emerge on the other side, mostly intact. Your name is gone. The other gaps in your memory are not too severe, you think. Lost the mirrors, but got three sky stories, a savage secret. Yeah, that's it. Okay, search for the industrialist's lost love. She must be here. She must. At last, you dash between the spirits who are pushing towards the door, calling her name. But of course, that doesn't work. The shades have been processed through the catafalc. They're faceless, nameless, the memories of their old lives and tatters. So you don't call their name. You call the name of the industrialist instead. Do any of them remember him? Transbean apparently does. She just meowed on my desk. You probably heard it. <laughs> One spirit turns to meet your gaze. She clutches your coat and her shoulders shake silently. The lost love resists your attempts to lead her away from death's door. 
You hand her a stick of chalk, and she scrawls on the wall of the catafalque. I love him still, she writes, but I am ready to move on. She pulls a small clay jar from her robes and thrusts it into your hands. It holds my voice, she writes. Give it to him. A memento. If I didn't know what was on the other side of death's door, I would accept the jar and let her go, because I want to respect her choice, but we know what's on the other side of death's door. They're ready to move on. This is not moving on. They think it is, but it isn't. So, feels kind of cruel a little bit, but... It really isn't. I'm going to convince her to return to the world of the living. It won't be difficult. She has little willpower left after the catafalque's trials. A few more mentions of the industrialist and her resolve will crumble. She glances back at death's door and hesitates. It begins to open. The first light blazes forth. She writes a single word on the wall. Yes. You grab her and pull her away from the door in its enticing, ensnaring light. You wait, clutching each other until it slams shut once again. You know from experience that the renegade dead cannot leave the Blue Kingdom without dissolving into salt. Before you drag the lost love beyond the kingdom's borders, you should seek permission for her passage from the son's daughter. Ah, now we have a reason to go back to the son's daughter. The lost love has boarded your engine. <laughs> it says, take the lost love back to the world of the living and reunite her with the industrialist. Make sure you're prepared. So I guess I probably, like it probably wouldn't stop me from going back to the reach, right? And then if I did that, I mean, they would die. So yeah, don't forget. Witness the opening of the door. Mm. The door fascinates and appalls. It is the ultimate promise, the ultimate threat. How many of the living have ever seen beyond? Have any? I'm assuming that would do the same thing. That's the same thing or maybe like a, maybe a smaller version of what I did when I just passed beyond completely, this is just to like look beyond, or maybe it would be the exact same thing. Either way, I'm expecting my terror to go up to max. So, no, turn back. You've gone too far. You turn and retreat into the catafalque. As the door opens behind you, blazing light cascades into the tunnels, but you do not look back. Though you've come so far, you turned back from the door itself. Perhaps there are some things that's, that should not be seen. Um, oh, now I'm back at the Endless Furrows, so this is where I can reclaim my stuff. Reclaim my face, please. You tramp through the mud until you find a bureaucratic outpost. Half cairn, half bunker. We don't usually get requests for returns. The Jaded Quartermaster is a shade with an almost spherical body and a mask whose lips are pursed in a frozen contempt. His voice mutters from a clay urn on his desk. You have to stoop to hear him. The Blue Kingdom doesn't really do returns as a rule. Hmm. I need an indulgence? What is that? Oh, that comes from the son's daughter? Or a testament of the feather. That's pretty easy to get, but I just don't have it on me right now. Okay, yeah, I should put this in my notes. What do I need for the other one? My name. Same thing? Yeah, same thing. Okay, so I need to return to Death's Door with two testaments of Feather. Leave them in peace. That's very high priority. Because that's messing up my stats a lot. Also, just, you know, story-wise, I'm going around without a name or a face. That's kind of disturbing. Oh, yeah, I totally forgot that I have a prospect that I'm going to finish here as well. Gemstones for 
death's door five of them, which equals a lot of money. And a couple bonus ministry stamp permits, and an invitation to Perdurance? Thanks? And a bunch of selections of Immaculate Souls. I'll take all of them. Alright, let's go to the son's daughter, just right over here. Oh, and my max heat is all messed up and some of my items, yeah, engine problems because I can't equip these things because my stats are shit now. So, I lost the Ratro, not no, and my mines. Yeah, I really need to get these stats fixed. That was putting them into my hold? Yes. Seek an audience with the Arbiter. Hmm. Ah, only the yoked are permitted an audience with the Arbiter of Fates. Okay. So that's a reason to become yoked. Alright, I'm gonna head back home. Made it back to Sky Barnet. Also took a little stop at the House of Days. Got three Testaments of the Feather. So, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, I'm going to go back to Death's Doorstep, get my face and my name back so I can re-equip the Ratronaut and the Mines. I also got another prospect for Death's Doorstep, Gemstones, yet again, so it'll be some more good profit. And then after that, go over to the Shadow of the... Well, I need to become yoked first, so I might do that to the Forge of Souls or perhaps the White Well. Um... But after doing that in Death's Door, then I can go to the Shadow of the Sun and the Sun's Daughter and ask them for permission to uh, take the Industrialist's love back to the Reach without them turning to salt.